our first set of exercises will be about the entropy. As a very, 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 very short part of theory before the exercises, we can write the entropy as an experiment, x, uh, and we open some kind of bra some brackets in order to form some kind of matrix on which the above line will be the line of events, x1, x2, until xn, let's say, and the below line will be their, prob their corresponding probabilities, p1, p2, until pn, where n is the number of variables given by each problem. So, going forward to our first problem, we are asked, asked to find out the maximum and the minimum entropy. Um, so we write the entropy as x equals the uh, the experiment equals x1, x2, and x3 because there are only three variables. There will be only three events. Now we write below the corresponding probabilities a, a minus b, b plus c as given in the problem. Now in the case of a maximum entropy all probabilities will be equal. So A equals A minus B equals B plus C. But they will be equal to what? To the entire, to a whole, meaning to one, um, split into three equal parts. Why three? Because three is the number of variables in this case. If we have another problem where there will be five variables, we will have one over four, five five equal parts but now we only have three so one over three so three equal parts a equals a minus b equals b plus c equals one over three and given this we have the following system where a equals one over three it's quite easy to figure it out that b equals zero and that c equals one over three so we write, in case of maximum entropy, we write this um, uh, thing like x1, x2, x3, and 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. Great. Moving on to the second requirement to find the minimum entropy. Uh, minimum entropy means that we must equal each probability one by one with the value of one. So in the first example, we take that P1 equals one, meaning that A equals one. So we know by now one value. P2 equals zero and P3 equals zero. A minus B equals zero, so that B equals one and p3 equals 0, b plus c equals 0, and c equals minus 1. I will not write this for each of the cases, <clears throat> because my colleague already did, but um, this is the main idea. We equal each probability with 1 in three different cases. And the number of cases depends on the number of variables as well. So we have p1 equals 1, p2 equals 1, and p3 equals 1. And at uh, the end, we write the solution as x1, x2, x3 as 1, uh, a minus b, 0, 0, x1, x2, x1, x2, x3, 0, 1, 0, and x3 as x1, x2, x3. 0, 0, 0, 1, sorry. Now for the second example, we have a kind of a similar situation, but now we ha have four different uh, variables. A, X, G, 2A, and X plus B. So we write the system as X1, X2, X3, X4, where it's X, G, 2A, X plus B. And we also have to calculate the maximum and then the minimum entropy. So in the case of maximum entropy, it's easy. We equal all of these. And all of these are equal to 1 over 4 because there are 4 variables. So we must split the whole 
into four equal parts. Okay, so moving on to the system, we have this x equals g equals 1 over 4. There are only 1, so it's easy. 2a equals 1 over 4. We multiply by 1 over 2, so we get that a equals 1 over 8. And x plus b equals 1 over 4. We already know that x is uh, 1 over 4, so from this b equals 0. And we will write the experiment as such. So 1 over 4, 1 over 4, 2a is 1 over 4, and 1 over, over 4. Okay. For the minimum entropy, uh, we apply the same, same method as here. Equal each probability 1 by 1 with 1. Uh, I will not write the, the system for all of these. I will write just for the first one, so we get the idea. So we get that P1 equals 1, X equals 1, P2 equals 0, P3 equals 0, P4 equals 0. And this is the first, this is the second. I will not uh, calculate this because it will take a while. P2, P0 is 1, and so on. Uh, and you can see the calculations made by my colleague here. We get it, these cases. And we can write the entropies like a combination of 1 and 0. So 1, 0, 1, x2 x1, x2, x3, x4, 0, 1, 0, 0. x3 is uh, x1, x2, 0, 0, 1, 0, and x4 is x1, x2, x3, x4. I do not have enough space to write this here, but it's 0, 0, 0, 1. This is the end of Our next set of exercises will be about fixed point representation, which is a way of converting data into binary. Uh, we can do this in three different ways, in direct code, inverse code, and uh, complementary code. Uh, before we do any exercise, we must specify that the first bit of each representation is the sign bit, and it will be not taken into consideration when uh, calculating the sum. So if the number given in the exercise, in our, in our case minus 37, is negative, negative, the first bit will be 1. And if it's positive, the first bit will be 0. Uh, we can write this, num this representation on either 8 or 16 bits. Because sometimes when we have bigger numbers, eight, uh, 7 powers of 2 will not be... Uh, enough. If we have a number like, I don't know, 130, we must write it as 128 plus 2, which is 2 to the power of 7 plus 2 to the power of 1. On these bits, on 0, we number these bits from right to left, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six seven and we will need to write this one on the seventh place but because the seventh place place is reserved for the same bit we will not be able to do so so we must transfer this to 16 bits we will write uh, one in the seventh place here and then we will populate this with zeros until the sign bit, which will be 1, because it's minus 30. I forgot to add this here, minus 30. So, for our example, we have minus 37. Minus 37. Which we can write as minus 
32 plus 4 plus 1 minus 2 at the power of 5 plus 2 at the power of 2 plus 2 at the power of power of 0 and we will write once corresponding uh, to these positions to position 0 position 2 and position 5 so here 0 1 2 3 4 5 and this is the direct code representation and this on the sign bit on the most significant bit is one which will not interfere in any way to our calculations but it will represent that the number is negative on 16 bits it's the same we have one once in position of 0 2 and 5 and on the sign bit because it's minus 37 but on 16 bits when doing uh, inverse code there is a rule that says that if the sign bit is 1 we must copy it then inverse all other digits and if the sign bit is 0 we just copy everything so our direct code on 8 bits is um, 10100101 and in inverse code it will be like this we copy the sign bit because it is 1 then inverse all other bits in this row 101101 and if it's on 16 bits we copy the direct code on 16 bits which is this then copy the sign bit and inverse every other bit here because it is one copy every other bit uh, we inverse every other bit sorry when we go to complementary code it's something similar but one more property we copy the sign bit and if it is one we inverse every bit until we reach the last one in the row and then we start copying um start copying so we we have an example like in this is a separate example for a better understanding like one zero zero one zero 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 we will only inverse the bits before this one so one 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 then copy if we have like this we will inverse all bits until this okay so in returning to our exercise of minus 37 we apply the same i will write the direct code on 8 bits then the inverse code on 8 bits which is we copy one and then we inverse all other bits one then here is my mistake sorry one then we do this on 16 bits i will copy it copy it then inverse every other bit until we reach the last one sorry which is the same as my colleague wrote here now moving on to something more complex we must compute 15 minus 9 in binary we will be doing this by using an addition then a an addition of a negative number so we will write 15 minus one, 9 as plus minus 9 so we write 15 as a sum of powers of 2 which can be 1 plus 14 and 14 we can write as 8 plus 4 plus 2 so 2 to the power of 1 plus 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 3 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 
9 we can write as a as 1 plus 8 so to the power of 0 plus 2 to the power of 3 1 plus 8 so here is 15 about position 0 1 2 3 and 9 position 0 and position 3 and here the sine bit is 1 because minus 9 is negative and 15 is positive so the sine bit here will be 0 and let me erase so it will be more intelligible okay now doing this addition 1 plus 1 equals 0 keep one in mind 1 plus 1 equals 0 keep one in mind 1 plus 1 equals 0 keep one in mind 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1 keep one in mind 1 plus 0 equals 1 N nothing in mind 0 plus 0 equals 0 0 plus 0 equals 0 0 plus 1 equals 1 so this is the direct code of this calculation now going into inverse code we apply the same rules as before for 15 we will not inverse anything because the sign bit is zero so we have the direct code of 15 here and the inverse code will be the same for minus nine the, because the sign bit is um, zero we will have to inverse all other bits except for the sign bit so it goes like this yes and now doing the calculations 1 plus 0 equals 1 1 in mind no nothing in mind sorry my mistake um, 1 plus 0 equals 1 1 plus 1 equals 0 1 in mind 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1 1 in mind 1 plus 0 plus 1 0 and 1 in mind 1 plus 1, 0, 1 in mind. 1 plus 1, 0, 1 in mind. 1 plus 1, 0, 1 in mind. 1 plus 1 equals, and we keep 1 in mind, this one here, which in order to find out the inverse code of this computation, we will have to add to the representation that we got. So we will be doing the following addition. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, plus 1, which is 1 plus 1 equals 0, 1 in mind, 0 plus 1 equals 1, and we copy the rest. This one. And now, about the normalization. Um, when we normalize something, if the sign bit is 0, we simply do not inverse anything. We just write it as it is, and that is a normalization. But if the sign bit is 1, we inverse anything. This in inverse code method, for complementary code, we have another method that is quite similar to the one used when we transform something in complementary. So now we transform these direct codes in complementary codes for 15 it will be the same because the sign bit is zero and we do not inverse anything and for nine for minus nine especially we have a negative sign bit and the complementary code will copy the sign bit inverse all other bits until the last one in the row which will just be copied 0, 1, 1, 1, here, and we just add this, 1 plus 1 equals 0, 1 in mind, 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1 and 1 in mind, 1 plus 1 equals 0, 1 in mind, 1 plus 1 equals 0, 1 in mind, 1 plus 1 equals 0, 1 in mind, so here is a mistake, uh, this should be, be 1, so we are here, 1 plus 1 equals 0 and 1 in mind, 1 plus 1 equals 0 and we keep 1 in mind, which in this case will not be add to the result, and we will just normalize this one. And because 
the sine bt is zero, we do not change anything when we normalize. So as a very short summary, normalizing can be done either in inverse code or complementary code, and it follows the same the same rules as when as presented here when we talked about inverse code and complementary code, meaning that in inverse code, when the sine bit is zero, we copy everything. When the sine bit is one, we just inverse everything. And in complementary, when we have zero as the sine bit, we copy everything. And when we have one, in sine, in sine bit, we copy everything until the last one in the row. And then from there on, we start inversing the digits. And we our next set of exercises is about floating point representation. And we can have this representation on um, three different levels on uh, simple precision, in double precision, and in double precision extended. The, these are different by the le the length of each uh, row of digits. For single precision is twenty, is thirty two. For double precision is sixty four, and for double precision extended is eighteen. I will explain later uh, how we get these numbers. Um, uh, so we first should start the exercise. So um, our first exercise requires of us to, tra to translate this number into its floating point representation on uh, 32 bits. So the first step when we have 32 bits it's to say that it's single precision so that the 32 bits can be um, cut into three uh, parts. The first one is a sine bit, which will not inter interfere in any way with our calculations. Then we have the carve function, the exponent, which is in single precision is, is 8. And then the mantissa, which in single precision is 23. So our for the first step we need to take in order to represent this is to move the dot here, the, this dot, is to move this dot uh, until we only have one digit equal to one before it. So in this scenario, we will only move it four times, one, two, three, four. And we will write this uh, as an exponent of two. And this number is the mantissa number. Um, the next step is writing the car function, which is a sum of the exponent that we found out in the previous step, which is 4. And then with this number in, the, in a single precision case. Uh, so why this? 8. Well, because we are doing a representation of the, on 32 bits and the corresponding factor on 32 is 8. We were to do this in double precision to do this number. Let's take the same example, but on 64 bits. We would still, the car function would have still been the exponent, but this time it have been 2 to the power of 11 minus 1. Minus 1 again. So it would have been 4 plus 2 to the power of 10 minus 1. So it would have been 4 plus 124 minus 1. It would have been 1027. 1, Here instead of uh, 120. Seven. So this representation would have looked different. 
returning to our uh, example, we get that it's 1 plus 2 plus 128. And this is the car function. This is the mantissa. And this is the sign bit, as this is, because it doesn't have a minus in front, it means that it's a positive number, so the sign bit will be zero, this. So our second example is with a negative decimal number, while our first one was a positive um, binary number so when we have a decimal we take uh, the integer which in our case is a hundred and split it repeatedly by two and we keep the rest se separately so 100 uh, split by two is zero is 50 rest zero 50 divided by two is 25 rest zero 25 divided by 2 is 12 rest 1 and so on until we only the our result is 1 which we will be adding here down and then we will be reading uh, the number from bottom to top and this is it's uh, the minus 100 representation now for the after comma part of the number we multiply it repeatedly by two until um, the result is one until there is no rest so 0 0.5 or 2 is one and we do not have here anything else as a reminder so we will stop there and only write one so 0 0.5 is 1 and combining these two we get this result we get this result and now we will do exactly as we did in the previous example we will move the comma until there is only one digit equal to 1 uh, before it so in this example we will be moving it one, two, three, four, five, six times, which is our exponent. We will also be using a single precision uh, representation, meaning that along with the exponent, we will be adding 127 and we get 133, which we will be writing in binary as 1 plus 128 plus 4. So 2 to the power of 0 plus 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 7. Here, here, and here. And we will be adding this to the representation because it is a negative number. We will have a 1 here as the sign bit. It will be this. And the car function will be this one. Our next set of exercises will be about BCB and other codes. And our first exercise is an addition in BCD, which stands for binary coded decimals. So at first, we must rewrite the decimal numbers in their binary forms and simply add them. I will do this again by hand. So, the thing about this addition is that if on um, in this result we obtain a number a binary number that is bigger than the binary representation of 9, which is um, 
this, this is 9 in binary. We must add the correction factor, which is 6 in binary. And we can also, we also have to add this factor, this correction function, factor, when from one evil to another, there is a transport in um, a bit transport. So let's start. We have 0, 1, 1, 1. This is bigger than 9. So here we must add the correction factor. 0, 1, 1, 0. Doing this, we get 0. one one in mind and another one in mind zero and from this we will have a transport here which means that we will also be adding a correction fa factor here we have a evil transport here so from here we get that one plus one equals plus one from mind equals one and one in mind one plus one equals zero one in mind one plus one equals zero one in mind one plus one equals zero one in mind and we keep one in mind here so here there will also be an addition with the correction factor six now doing this we get that it is 1 plus 0, 1, one 0 plus 1, 1, 0 plus 1, 1, 0 plus 0, 0. This is the other, the second nibble. Now, um, doing this addition, we have 1 plus 1, 0, plus 1 from mind, 0, 1 in mind. Sorry, 1 plus 1. So we get that. Here we get that 1 plus 1 equals 0. Plus 1 from mind equals 1. And we keep 1 in mind. 0 plus 0 plus 1 is 0. 0, 0 and 1 in mind. Here 0, we keep 1 in mind. Now we also add this. And it gives us one zero one in mind zero and here we have one plus one equals zero plus one from mind one and we keep one in mind this is the final result so if we transform this um these binary numbers in decimals we will get that it's Three, nine, seven, and four, which is the exact same as the their um, decimal addition. For our next exercise, we will ha we have to write nine in three different codes: gray, excess three, and icon, and ninety-seven in BCD. So, how do we do the gray one? Well, we have First, to transform 9 into its binary form. So 9 is uh, 1001. And the way we do gray is that we have the modulo uh, to sum of each two digits. So I will write this again as um, 1001. So I will, this is 1. Now I will be adding these two. This is one. I will be adding these two, zero, and I will be adding these two, one. This here, I will highlight it so I that I hope it will be more clear how I did it. And this, this is the uh, gray representation. The excess tree it only means that we have to add a tree in, in binary form to it 
binary representation. So we have 9 in binary plus 3 in binary. It's 1 plus 1, it's 0, 1 in mind. 1 plus 1 from mind, it's 0, 1 in mind. It's 1, 1. This is its uh, XS3, XS3 form. In icon, in icon, um, we, it is a bit more complicated. We have to inverse the digits of this number. So, we have to write the complement meaningly. Uh, for example, 9 is the complement of 0 because it's its inverse form. So, if 0 is 0, 0, 0, 9 will be 1, 1, 1, 1. I think it would be better if I make it a table. So I can I think I can explain it better. So uh, until four, we will write its normal uh, binary representation. From 5 on, we will be negating all these numbers and just write this. 6 is 1, 1, 0, 0. It's basically... This. No, it's 0, 0, 1, 1. Here. It's uh, 7, it's with... Two. It's one one zero. Nine is with one. It's one 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 zero, and nine is with zero. The complement of this. So nine in a icon will be the complement of zero. In BCD we have to write ninety seven it in it. And it's quite simple, we just have to take each digit and find its binary form, then unite these two. So for 9, its binary form is 1001, and for 7, it's 1111, uh, 3 1s. And getting this, we get the BCD representation of this number. Our next set of exercises will be about CRC or cyclic redundancy check and in this um, chapter we will be working with a lot of polynomials especially polynomial division so let's start with the first um, exercise we have to check if um, the message is corrupted or not how do we do this basically we have to find out if the rest of this um, division. So if the rest is zero, then it is correct. But if the rest is not zero, it is incorrect. And in order to do this, we must fir first transform these binary representations into uh, poly polynomials. How do we do this? Well, we just um, write uh, the po the positions of the one of the one of the one digit um, as a power of x. So we will be numbering this as usual: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and just write um, our polynom x x to the power of 6, x to the power of 5, x to the power of 3, plus x to the power of 2, divided by this one, we do it in the same way, x to the power of 3, x to the power of 3, x to the power of 1, and x to the power of 0, which is 1. So, now we just have to divide them. This, 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 this. Uh, 
I will go here because I do not have enough space. So it's x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 plus x plus 1 here. And it's so um, the rest we get because there are no more polynomials, no more uh, numbers we can divide by. This is x to the power of 1 and this is x to the power of 0 and we cannot divide by negative numbers in this case this is our re this is our rest um so given that the rest is x to the power of 2 plus 1 which isn't zero then we get that the code word is corrupted for our next <coughs> exercise it is um, something more complex. So we have this initial message that needs to be transmitted. This is in hex. We have to transform it in binary first. We do this into uh, nibbles with their binary presentation corresponding to 6c. Uh, and this is the generator that we have to divide by, which is written in binary and transforming it, it in a polynomial form is this, because it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, these are the positions, so it's x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 2 plus x. Okay, now we have to find out what we will be uh, dividing. We will be dividing the message, but not the message that we get. We will also be um, multiplying this message that we get with the highest coefficient of the generator. And the highest coefficient of the generation is x to the power of 4. So we will be multiplying mx, this, with 4. And we will get that x to the power of 6 or x to the power of 4 equals x to the power of 10 because there is this property. I will not be writing this for each case because you get the idea by now. And we will have the following division. We will divide the message. Wait, one second. Okay. Divided by the generator x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 2 plus x. So, for the first time, we must multiply the generator with 6 in order to get rid of the highest power of the message. One second to. And we will be doing this repeatedly. I will not narrate anything because it's quite um, boring and simple to add and subtract some powers. Power, power of 4. And I will write um, below here because there is not enough space. Um, the rest is x to the power of 6 plus x to the power of 4. We add a, x to the power of 2 here. And we get that it's x to the power of 6 plus x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 3. And x to the power of 3, we do not have anything else to divide by so this uh, this is our rest in order to get our um, um, to have our initial message the 
transmitted to find out the transmission of the initial ma ma uh, message we must modulo to add uh, the message we received and this rest and we do this simply by just adding to the message the rest x3 like here and now we transform this in a binary so for position 0 1 2 3 here is 1 I will uh, delete this line so I have enough space. Position 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. These are enough bits. I, I mean, we can't write up until uh, 16 bits, but it's no use because there will only be zeros. Uh, one and five and we also have one here and the rest of this will be zeros so this is our transmitted message which can be seen here it's the same it's eight and doing this in hex um, we take each nibble we have zero which can be not written <laughs> it's optional we have zero uh, hundred and ten which is six we have then um, eleven eleven zero zero which is five which is a c sorry i don't know why they said five and a thousand which is eight this is in hex Our next set of exercises will be about hemming bits and hemming distances. Well, our first exercise is about uh, hemming distances. And we will calculate the hemming distance between BC and BB, both numbers being in hex. I already wrote on the side um, their uh, binary representations, so I will just uh, make sure to copy them very beautiful so that I can <clears throat> highlight each column now uh, we have to look on each column and see if these digits differ and if these differ are different then the number of differences will be the distance hemming between these two numbers. So we have one difference, one difference, one difference, and these are all equal. So um, it seems that our hemming distance is equal to three. Uh, and the next question is how many bits are inserted into BC as a bit message? So first of all, we write BC as a um, a binary representation and then we also write it in a decimal representation how do we do this well we multiply uh, each one bit with its uh, corresponding power of two so bit seven bit five bit four bit three bit 2 and in total it will be 188 decimal now how do we find the number of bits well we have to find the um, highest power of 2 which is lower than Uh, 188 and I wrote this before so here I can see that 2 to the power of 7 is equal to 128 which is the highest power of 2 uh, smaller than 188 so uh, I will delete this so I can get some space and now uh, we will find how many bits there are between 2 at 0 and 2 at 7 
um, well, you know, the usual formula, last number minus the first one over the base plus one. So we have seven. Seven minus zero over one plus one, which equals eight. So there will be eight Hamming bits inserted into BC. Now, the set of exercises will be about the Boolean algebra. And um, I will start by saying that these are all the properties we should know in order to be able to simplify expressions such as this one, this one. So our first exercise is about simplifying a function, this one especially. So I will start doing this by opening up these two brackets and <clears throat> it will come to this x. So we open it up as usual as in normal algebra. And now we just copy this and we will um, use some of these uh, properties. So z or z equals z, this, and um, y or y negated equals zero this property so we just write z plus z or y y negated plus y z plus zero everything <laughs> multiplied by this one okay the next step we have to take is to give a, a common factor for these two terms. So I will simply write this expression as z plus z multiplied with y negative plus y. Everything multiplied by this expression. And this property <laughs> um, it is the same as this one, and its result will be um, 1. So in the end, we just have z plus z, or 1. Everything multiplied with the remaining vector. And now, <laughs> with the next property, uh, z or 1, it is z. So z plus z, everything multiplied with this, and now we have to find another property about z plus z, which equals z. So we write z or this factor, and now we have to simplify this factor. We will be using... Um, one of the De Morgan's the theorems is um, this one. So normally we have things like this. If the product, the negated product equals to the sum of negated factors, but in our case, we will have something a factor that, that is double negated so we just write this as follows we have y double negated so in the end it will only be z negated z negated plus y because we have this property here that something double negated equals the variable the, the number itself and following this we get that x 
uh, is multiplied with z negated plus y and now we just open up the brackets and have the following um, expression and now using another property about z or z negated uh, here it equals zero so our re remaining factor is z y which is our answer and it is the simplified version of this function our next exercise about uh, boolean algebra is quite similar to the first one it asks of us to simplify the f function and um, show this time the complement of the result not only the result so we will be working um, along with one of my colleague here both in order to see if our result is correct or not so we have y z plus y negated z plus z x negated we give here z as a common factor we just go z multiplied with y plus y negated plus z x negated and we have a property that says that y plus y negated is a 1 so in so simplifying this we just get that z plus z or x negated and now we will be applying a common factor again we and we will just be writing x multiplied with 1 plus x negated um, this is equal to 1 here and in the end we will only get z as the result and now the complement the complement of the result is the negated version of the function so we just get z negated this is the complement Our next set of exercises will be about truth tables, logical gates, and k-maps, also known as Carnot diagrams. So for the first exercise, we have this function with three variables. Our request is to make a truth table for it, uh, which, <clears throat> which in which the function is true only if both n, x, and y are valid at the same time. And also we have to find the um, simplification through mean terms and max terms. So for starters, we should um, we should um, uh, learn how to draw the table. Well, we will write the variables first. And how do we know how much rows we will need in it? Well, we consider each row a combination which gives the final function. And we learn this number of combinations by the formula 2 to the power of x, where x is the number of variables. So you have 2 to the power of 3, which is 8 combinations in total. And how do we know how to combine this? Well, we repeatedly split these combinations by 2 in order to see our values. So we have 4, 2, and 1 repeatedly. So <clears throat> for the first, we populate the table with 4 zeros, then with 4 ones. Then with two zeros, two ones, 
then with 1011 then we have the function and the function said that it is valid only if both x and y are valid at the same time meaning that they are one equal to one so we only have this case in the last two so here is one one and the rest of the function is zero why one because in binary one stands for true and zero stands for false uh, i think we should number these combinations because it will also be easier later on we start from zero as you can see now for the fun part of this um, lesson the C dcf and ccf the dcf uh, are also called the mean terms and they are written as a product of the variables where the value zero is negated whereas the max terms the ccfs are a sum of variables where the value one is negated so so we write them as such the product with the variables that take the value zero negated so like this we will only be looking uh, on these three columns maybe i should uh, highlight them so x negated And for CCF is the exact inverse. We write the variables as sum with one negated. So here we have x plus y plus z, x plus y plus z negated, x plus y negated plus z, and so on. Basically, if you want this to go easily, you just negate what hasn't been negated on the before column and denegate what has been negated there that assumingly we did this right the first time so for um, the dcf for the mean terms we will only be taking in consideration the function that is the functions that are valid so we can write a function as a sum of mean terms and that is equal to the product of max terms. And the sum of mean terms is equal to m6 plus m7, which are x, y, z negated plus x, y, z. So we do the common factor x, y. And this is a Boolean algebra property that says that this is one. So in the end, we only get x y as our function. Now for um, the product of max terms, we take the ones we did not take, meaning the ones whose function is zero. So we have the rest m0 or m1 or m2 or m3 or m4 or m5 okay and so it's x plus y plus z plus x plus y plus z negated and uh, multiplied with x negated z negated so it's this i hope i wrote this right both here this should also equal x y after we calculate this now for a logical gate 
we have the part the theory part on the right side so our function is even it even even if it has three variables we only use two uh, as a combination of its result and in order to this to do this we can write a function as x multiplied by y and we will be using the end symbol here the multiplication one so we make two lines that we denote by x and y we tie them together draw this symbol of multiplication and we take the variables out of this symbol where they can be where the function exists and this is the end symbol this is how we draw a logical uh, gate our second exercise um, on this chapter is about cardinal di diagrams so we have the following um, table and we now we must write the function and simplify it while we're at that okay so um this is a kernel diagram and for the for starters uh, when constructing a k-map there are some rules we have to follow the hemming or the first rule is that the hemming distance between uh, each row and each column must be equal to one which is why here we must make the switch because usually 10 stands for 2 and 11 for 3 in binary, but we will be using gray code where these two can be switched in order to, for our hemming distance to be 1. And the same here. And because of this switch, we will also be switching the uh, numbering of the boxes in here. It, as you can see, they're um, places. Now uh, we'll write the main terms, I've already written them before, and now we will be grouping them uh, from the largest possible group to the smallest possible group. But the thing about this grouping is that each group must be equal to, to, to a power, so the numbers of main terms in a group must be equal to, to, uh, to uh, the power of something. Um, so, for starters, let's start with the, I will do it, I will call it the blue group. So, um, we will be assessing how many of these values change. So, because um, for Z and double v everything changes constantly we will not be writing them as this little function will be independent of them and we will just be considering the x and y so because x does not change we will just be writing x and because y changes we will be ri writing it with a negated form for the second group, I will uh, do this. There, this should be another M here. Sorry. So for this second group, uh, we will as well be. looking for repeating elements so here our repeated elements are y and z both are zero so we will be writing them both with a negated form for the third group it's the yellow one uh, i will be considering this one here everything changes so we do not take this into consideration so we will just be writing z negated and double v negated and for our fourth group the green one 
I will be doing this one and this one. I will explain it later how come that I grouped them like this because I forgot to do it in the beginning. So we're looking at the way things change in the respective columns. And so on the columns, nothing changes. So we just write x, y. And on the on lines, we see that double v is always zero so we write double v and now we will just be adding this in order to get our function so <clears throat> uh, we will be doing the sum now and okay we'll be giving the common factor of the first and the last one then just copy the other two now this is a boolean algebra uh, a property that gives us this relation and now here we give z negated as a common factor as well and now we give the parentheses as a common factor and this is our uh, simplified solution of the k-map. What I said I would explain and I did not explain is why uh, we can group uh, these factors such as here. So basically a k-map is an endless table that has uh, repeating edges. So let's say this is our uh, table. It's a random one. Um, so uh, each color, each uh, line will repeat its opposite one. So these two columns will repeat each other and these two will repeat each other. So we, if we have an example such as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, let's say it, it's a pseudo K map we will be continuing this table with the same values and so on for infinity this is the explanation for the grouping basically we we can group these two but instead of writing endless tables we will just group this and this and the only thing that must still be done here is to draw the logical gate i already gave the theory here about how to draw this so we will try this on our own for the theory in front of us so we have the four variables and we look to the fir for the first parentheses both of these are negated so we negate them oops sorry this is not a triangle this is also a triangle, and then we unite this in addition in this symbol. Then we have the next two, only z is negated, and we, we are uh, going to unite it with x, which is not negated. Jump, addition, uh, plus, plus. And then we unite this in multiplication. This is our function. This is how we draw this logical gate of this function. The next part will be the last one, the assembly. And I will explain each function as they appear in the exercises. So um, for the first one for the move command denoted by mov we will rewrite the contents of the left side of, of the expression of the registers and we will replace the value inside of them with um, the argument the value written after the comma and following these instructions we will have that ax is one one two three hex ax is this And dx is this. 
the next instruction, the mal instruction, is about multiplying um, something. And here is mal bh. The answer of this instruction is always registered in ax. And before I start multiplying, I must um, say that each register is made up of two parts the high part and the low part so um, multiplying bh with we will be multiplying it with the corresponding part of ax and uh, so both higher parts of these registers are 11 and 21 so um we will write this in a um, this is written in hex and we will write this in uh, decimal so we have 21 in hex is equal to this in decimal and 11 in hex is equal to this decimal so we will be multiplying these two values and we will get that they are 561 in decimal and now we must transform this into hex how do we do this by dividing it multiple times with 16 the first result is 35 then we have rest 1 the second result is 2 with a rest of 3 and then zero with the rest of two and from the last to the first we write them and we get the hexadecimal representation of five six one written in decimal and i said this before i think that this value will be registered in ax so we get that after this command ax will be zero two three one hex so we go here and comment that ax now is zero two three one hex i think if i remember it correctly yes the next instruction is the not instruction and it's quite easy it's about inversing the digits so where we have one we will put zero and when and where we have um zero we'll put one so we write dx which is a f c and d and we will write the hexadecimal representation of each this 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 and this and now we will just invert this to zero 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 one zero 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 one one zero zero one zero and this written um one zero three two so dx will take the value in hexadecimal of zero of this Now, for the XOR, it's uh, not that hard, but we must have uh, some knowledge about the modular tradition. So, this, is only, this can only be done in binary, so we have to add CX and DX. CX has not been um, changed from its initial value, but DX has. And Instead of being EFCD, now it is 1032. So we do that CX modulo to addition of, and we again write it uh, in binary. And we write CX, uh, it's A10C. So it's 10, 10, 1, 0 and this modulo to addition with dx which is this one 
because we updated it so it's not the same as the initial the initial and we add this column by column without keeping anything in mind so we just add this okay so we get that it's zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero 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 one one zero one and in the end transforming this we get that it's uh this is 10 plus 1 it's b this is 1 this is 3 and that is uh c this is the final uh, value for cx b13 c okay so now to answer the usual question for these exercises the new values of each register will be i will write this here ax will be we look from bottom to top in order to see the updated versions bx remains unchanged so it's cx is b13c and dx is um, 1032 everything in hex um, this is the second exercise of the assembly uh, part I'm switching to PowerPoint right now because the tablet I have used has some technical difficulties right now and uh, I will explain each instruction as we go as I did in the previous video so we have the first four instructions which are move and denote by MOV which uh, assign which assigns the values these uh, these values to the registers uh, our first unknown command is add the addition which simply adds the the two numbers here that that are represented by al by the lower part of the register ax which is 67 and 58 in while when we add them we can do this in hex in normal hex so what will we get we have 7 plus 8 which is 15 and in hex it is f we, and we just write here f and then we have because we have no nothing to keep in mind there there this addition doesn't go over the 15 mark we just add the, the next two so 6 plus 5 is 11 which in hex means b so our uh, now al will update itself to bf and we will write here bf and ax will also update and it will be 21 bf now for the push it's um, a command that puts the value into a stack and first i think i must answer the question what is a stack it's uh the way the the way asm works it's a leaf of stack a last in first out and it helps us visualize our data and the change in our data so when we push something into the stack into the memory we do it from bottom to top and when we extract some data using the pop command we do it from top to bottom so when we push something into the stack we will push 21 bf into the stack here and we will move on to the next next command which is the not that we also uh, talked about in the previous examples so in the not command we just have to inverse these bits one second i wrote the cx value here and we will write 
Firstly, we write these in a binary, these hex numbers in binary. So for A, it's 10, 10. For F, it's 11, 11. For 4, it's 100. And for C, it's 1, 1, 0, 0. And now we just have to inverse these bits. How do we do this? Excuse me. I want a space here. Thank you. And then we just inverse them, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and uh, 0, 0, 1, 1. And what is the final result? Our final result, it will be 5, 0, B, and 3. So this is the, val the next value that CX will obtain. So it, it's... 50B3. 50B3. Again, we have a push command. We must push the updated version of CX into the stack. So we just write this above. That is a 5, not an S. Sorry. Okay. We push CX here. Now we pop. We I said before that we pop from top to bottom. So we will pop like this. I will add here uh, the details of this command. So AX takes the most the value from the top of the stack. And now the value from the, from the top of the stack is 50B3. And we delete this. I will just erase like this this value from the stack now this value doesn't exist in the stack our next command is to push bx into the stack we look again from bottom to top and we see that bx has not been modified its value has not been mo modified so we write the initial one 0 1 3 2 on the next available box in the stack then we did this i can erase it then our next command is uh, another new one, is the OR command, which is a uh, logical addition. And logical addition has these following properties that I wrote beforehand here. This, for. So we have to add BX and DX. And BX at this point is the... the they are the initial values, they have not been changed, so they are um, 0, 1, 3, 2 plus 1, 2, 5, 4. And now we write them in binary and then we add them. Um, I don't know if I have enough space here, I hope I do. Otherwise I will erase the, top, the line from the top. So we have them in binary. It's 3 and 2 plus 1, 2, 5 and 4, 100. So we will add them in logic using the, these, the addition from the right part of the table, the one written in a rainbow. Right to left usually, but I can't do this in PowerPoint right now. But because there, there are no keeping in mind, no transporting to another nibble, the results will still be the same. So um, I will do this like this. I hope uh, it's okay. Sorry, space one one zero. And now we just write this in hex again. It's one, it's three. It's 7 and it's C. This is the new value of BX. I write here that BX is 1, 3, 1, 3, 7, C. Now another new command is AND. The AND command is used to multiply uh, the digits the binary digit of dx and cx in our case them in binary right now 5 is 101 0 is four zeros b is uh, 1011 and b and 3 is just 11 
and one, two, five, four, we have one, we have two, which is ten, we have five, which is hundred and one, and we have four, which, which is a hundred. And now we multiply this column by column, bit by bit. Um, I can't really draw on this, but I hope you understand. Again, multiplication, it's normal. It's, it should be done from right to left, but I can't write like it on PowerPoint. So I'm just going to say that it's 1, uh, 0 or 0 is 0, 1 or 0 is 0, 0 or 0 is 0, and 1 or 1 is 1. I will keep doing this. 0, 0, 0, 0. And our final result is 1, 0, 1, and 0. 10, 10 is the new value of dx dx is come on the new value of dx is 10 10 in hex of course i didn't write hex here i should have hex 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 okay and now again we have to push and pop um, values in the stack first we have to push dx which is 10, 10 and we push it into the available box and then we have to pop while so we pop by deleting uh, values from the stack and assigning them to their respective arguments so i will write at the end these pops we have to pop cx first, which will take the value from the top of the slide. So cx will become 10, 10. Uh, bx will become the next available value from the top of the stack, stack, which is 0, 1, 3, 2. This is 10, 10. bx will become 0, 1, 3, and 2. And dx will take the next avail available value. Uh, value from the top of the stack and because now we only have one value in the stack which is on the top and the bottom as well the x will become 2 1 bf and we erase it from the stack and our stack is now empty and of course we have a x which is going from bottom to top our a x will be 50b3 everything in hex and these are our results